This is a 2001 Bumblebee 254, measuring in at a whopping 15 feet, five inches of fiberglass fury. Bumblebee boats were established in 1973 and closed the doors in 2007 in Tullahoma, Tennessee. Tullahoma, Tennessee is also the hometown of George Dickel Whiskey. And after spending a day in rough water in a 15 foot long fiberglass boat, you're gonna need a drink. <laughs> this particular model of the 254 sports cherry red gel coat matched with a flat gray and black pinstripes, which makes it look way faster than the 80 horsepower maximum will allow on this 15 foot beast. Yeah, could you get that in frame? Were you able to keep up with that? The 254 featured a, sorry, okay. this is, I can't, I don't even know what to do. It has no features. The 254 featured a small casting platform, a rod organizer in the floor of the boat, but plenty of room for activities between the driver's console and the front deck. The 254 featured a really deep live well that was conveniently placed right between the seats and opened and closed with a TH Marine remote grain valve. The Bumblebee 254 is a perfect choice for my guest today, Gerald Swindle, who's been around this fishing game for a long time and just now switched to a Phoenix Bats boat, which started in the Bumblebee plant in Tullahoma, Tennessee. I'm Luke Duncan, and this is Boats and Pros. Let's go get G. That's all to be good, and anytime Luke Duncan asked me to go to the lake. Good guy, to almighty. You said we was gonna go to the lake. <laughs> you didn't say we was gonna go get in the lake. Boats and pros, baby. <laughs> boats and pros. At what level of boats and pros? <laughs> you said, let's go to the lake. I'm like, sure, what come back. What do you think? We can't all be fancy and $80,000 the whole time. It's just been left in the sun a little bit. They quit building boats in 06. A little bit. A lot. <laughs> but I think, it'll bu I think it'll buff out. <laughs> Yeah, that's what that's what my daughter said when she backed into the dumpster with her car. I think it'll buff out. Yeah, once will. we get them fenders on it. So I'm going. We're going. Taking it back old school. Yeah, this is it. Boats this and pros. Boats and pros. This is this and this boat is important. You know why? Phoenix boats. They started building them in the old bumblebee plant. Huh? Huh? Hey, <laughs> put yeah. it together. Thank, thank I. Think I, I'm not thinking. Fifteen foot of fiberglass. As long as this thing. <laughs> When you can run the trolling motor and drive at the same time. I do got some stories in an old bumblebee though. I guarantee you do, and I do too. It was the first, it's where I started, in a bumblebee. So we're taking this bad boy We're out. taking this boy on the G. The G on the G in the bumblebee. <laughs> yeah, make sure the wind ain't blowing. Where's the flags at? Make sure you got your life jacket. Let me get me a jacket. I ain't scared to go to the lake. <laughs> now look here, son. Well, this thing ain't ever been walking. When you throw this in the curve, I need you to grit your teeth. <laughs> Tell me we got a bungee cord across the motor to hold it steady. Remember how your daddy used to take a bungee cord oh, and yeah. the steering wheel of the shifter so she didn't get sideways? Yeah, I'm not real sure what's about to happen. We're going to find out. Oh, God. What I'd like to say, this is a 13 degree pitch that's moved back to 11 and a quarter. But if you'll notice, it's on the right-handed blade. They did that a lot when they took off. A lot of guys like to fish the right side of the lake and he could scoop it. When he comes back in, he throws this in it right there. That's a left-hand chip off. It almost shims it out where it runs smooth. But yeah, yeah that's some nice. It's gonna one. run real nice. That's some racing stuff right there. <laughs> well, it's got these racing stripes on the it. The only thing would be better than this if we had Fat Cat Newton in here. <laughs> uh, this here is what they call a motor toter. <laughs> yeah, that ain't a TH Marine motor stick. Now, what my dad used to do with this, I he'd get, get this, this off right now when the kids wouldn't get and he'd start hitting us with this. <laughs> get in the truck! <laughs> and Tanner, I'm gonna give you a little tip. I've done this. If you ever leave this on this motor, any motor, especially a Mercury 250. <laughs> it makes one hell of a noise when you put it on pad. <laughs> <laughs> it does. Yeah, and a 15 foot boat, and Luke said to tell you this boat is cherry red, more it's like cherry. A, a molded cherry. It's kind of white chalky. <laughs> so just remember I love you. Take care of Bama. We're going out here. I got my life jacket on, okay? I ain't took it off since I left the house. I'm scared just riding around with it. <laughs>
Will she crank, Captain? Oh, we got a bite. Oh. The port went under. <laughs> yeah. Let's run back to the house and get some back to jail. Back to jail house. We're going to get some jumper cables. Oh my God. Oh, let me trim this old high horse fire motor up. I come you hit every bump at the ramp. Oh, it's going to work. Back to G's. Yes. Sometimes you have to improvise jump start your motors. When you key in on that PMA. Well, it's this type that. situation where positive mental attitude pays off yeah, the most. PMA, is. Yeah. That's why he wears a bracelet. Just for days yeah. he has to hang out with me. Because when my boat don't start, I get angry. Bama, you got a piece? We're just gonna make sure I can turn it. Hit it again, Luke. Hang on, let me get another. Boy, it's a, all right, hang on, let me get another bite on. This is um, oh, it's a high horsepower motor right here. That compression is what it is. When they rebuilt it, they mm. went with them bigger pistons for that top end speed in those tournaments. <laughs> <laughs> it said, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. Help! Get up there and hit her one time, Luke. No. No. No, she ain't gonna do it, but hey, mm -hmm. don't give up. Nobody give up. Hey, son. Hey, biting, you gotta get out there and get on, don't you? <laughs> I know. I know. What? Just happened. That just happened right there. Take two. I don't we got know. The jumper cables. I don't know if y'all noticed this, but if you ride through Jackson, Mississippi, and you want to get David Banner, look at them seats. <laughs> Cadillac Hawn <on> 22. <laughs> Most people don't understand is in this type of temperature, most motors are cold nature. <laughs> well, it is January. <laughs> oh, me. It's my daddy's boat, so don't, <laughs> don't scuff it up. Appears to be a 70 horse. <laughs> But that's 70 <laughs> plus 190. That's more than 50. I'll be Tanner, you're going to get a little water on your, <laughs> on your side. What was your first boat? Well, my dad had some old boats back in the time. But, you know, some old rough. They, I think that's called roughnecks back then. Yeah. And then uh, my brother and I, we took a, like a 16 foot aluminum boat. And some reason, though, we got some car paint. I don't know where we stole that at. We sanded that joker and painted it blue on blue put us a wooden deck in it. So it was just like a regular old aluminum boat, put the deck in it, had one battery. So when you took it to the ramp, you took the battery out of the truck, put it in the boat. You ain't never done none of that. Crank it, run around all day, and hook the trolling motor to it. And you could only fish till you thought the truck wouldn't crank. You had to judge it. Like when the trolling motor get weak, you'd be like, well, we better go back. Painted it, fixed it up, and then I actually bought my first bass boat was a Hydra Sport. Okay. Old 175 Merc. Cold, choke it right there. You get half drunk, you'd be messed up like a lab rat on them gas fumes. <laughs> Especially if you got a bad wind blowing in there on you, just choking you out. What length was it? 18 footer. My dad had like a 16 with a 115. Oh, Lord. A Hydra Sport, he used to tell me about. I had an 18 footer, and us being carpenters, I took plywood and made me a whole flipping deck on it all the way back here. I was, hey, dude. People you, wasn't easy back in, son. You had no. to go with it. Bought my first hummingbird depth finder at a pawn shop. Really? Yes, sir. Didn't even have all the parts. I remember when I hooked it up and them little fish got on the screen, I thought, this is awesome. I like, realized it was in the garage. I'm like, hang on, <laughs> they're not gonna be real. I gotta get Hashtag them. demo mode. Hashtag demo mode. <laughs> These two years won five club tournaments, never realized it was on demo mode. I thought I was on them everywhere I went, just stopping. 
That is confidence. Uh, confidence is what it is, baby. I may need to go back to demo mode on some of mine. <laughs> I mean, that was some good stuff back in the day, man. My dad had aluminum boats. We built them, and then we got them. You got a glass boat. That was big time, man. But you still didn't have all the neat stuff. You still, buy, I can remember having 12 volt trolling motors. You know, battery going dead every day you go to the ramp. It either wouldn't crank. The trolling motor battery go dead. It, it's like when you bought it, you went down to Sears and got your whole tool kit, and then you was a fisherman. I see kids now give up, man. They'll come up here and they'll say, well, my boat won't crank. We're going home. I'm like, huh? No. no what? What? You going to buy a paddle? Freedom sells them. <laughs> yeah, the trolling motor you know, gets something. Back then, if you literally you had one day off work, man, you went. No matter the weather. No matter the weather. If the battery went dead, you went and got the one out of the truck. If it was raining, I didn't even have a good rain suit. I laughed with Wes Logan the other day. And you know, little Wes, he's a rookie on the lease. He wins the points last year. He's a Neely Henry man. So me and he was laughing. He's 26, 25. Yeah. I said, Wes, when I was your age, I run from Paradise Point to the back end of Logan Martin Dam. And I said, didn't even own a toboggan. I said, never wore a face mask. I said, never had gloves. It'd be 25 degrees. And I said, we'd run that 35, 40 miles. And shoo, he said, well, nothing. I said, we didn't have nothing. Didn't know I said, here's what you did. You put one hand under you. <laughs> you drive like that. Would you like to have had a windshield like this back then? It's that tall. I mean, well, this one's this one's. What I like about this bit. one is when I get to high speed, it'll tilt back and throw that air up over me because <laughs> I'm a taller guy. This is a sneak hole. Yeah. This is a sneak hole we're fixing to go Why into. Why we call these sneak holes is, you know, you could sneak around and get in there. I cannot believe we're out here and didn't even bring a pole because I would catch one on a jig. You see that current stacking? Oh, yeah. We Current's didn't bring coming a pole. out. Look at the clean water meeting the dirty right here, boys. Oof. We'd come in a place like this and we'd turn everything off and boy, we'd, we'd be like, smash. Yeah, it's fixing to go down. God, we'd throw frogs and buzz, but all the way around, we'd get one bite and it'd be a guard and we'd swear all the way home with a giant. <laughs> we didn't have phones back in to call mom and tell them, we missed a big one. But you'd fish in here all day. I used to hey, have. Hey, son, I, like it was Logan Martin. Oh, this whole yeah. place just round and round. And I don't even know what I was looking for back then. But you was just fishing. I didn't. It didn't care. It didn't matter. Well, you it just, didn't matter. Well, you, didn't, you wasn't a pro. You just was in a boat, and you was just like, we're in a boat. We're in a boat. When was the first time you fished out of the state of Alabama? Can you remember? Was that for a tournament, or mm -hmm. did you, you and your dad go? I fished a Jerry Ryan's tournament. Jerry Ryan. And uh, it then went on to be the Fisherman's Bass Circuit. And actually, I was fishing as a co angler and my dad sent me with one of the guys that was fishing as a, as a boater. And he's like, you just go with John and you go fish. And we went to Lake Kiwi. In South Carolina. I, I, got, I jumped in the truck with somebody and just took off, man. And I, it was like going to Disney. Never had seen another water. No, dude, I didn't have no idea. I was just going. I had the biggest spinnerbait on. You ever seen, you could see 12 foot deep. <laughs> and I was slinging it like I was a kid with a brand new candy apple. How old were you then? 19, probably. 18, 19. Eight, so 18 years old, you really fished one of your first major tournaments. Yep. As a co-angler. I might I might have been 20. I'm trying to think back. When did you fish your first tournament though? Not counting Jerry Ryan, like you and you and Ernie. Oh, we fished him back then, like right out of high school and stuff. We'd fish a little local stuff. Fish on with Smith my dad. Lake. Yeah, my dad would take us on Smith Lake, Logan Martin. And once uh I think it was during uh, when Jimmy Carter was president, pretty much, you know, the economy fell. We I mean I mean, no mom and dad don't like to talk about it. We pretty much lost what we had. You know, my dad had to sell his boat and all this equipment, and you know, we just didn't have nothing. So then we spent several years, like we were just fishing the river, and aluminum boat, my dad would paddle and just paddle us around and around and around. So, you know, then once I got out of school, things got a little better, and he actually got back and he got him a boat. It was a bass hawk. Bass that? hawk, oh, yeah. Bass hawk. I remember bass we hawk. We started fishing some tournaments around the house, and you know, that that's when you really knew, like, this is gonna be addicted. Still, it's the good old days, man. Sleeping five or six deep in a hotel room. Piled up. All you cared about, though, is you were fishing. It I didn't matter, it. man. It didn't matter. I see people now that like, they're like, ah, you know, I don't know if I could compete. I don't have a, I don't have a brand new Phoenix boat or a Toyota Tundra. You don't have to have that. You know, you, you got the passion for fishing. I mean, you know how it was. You grew up in Alabama. Oh, yeah. You've done some river trips. I've done some river trips. <laughs> I Fox slept in the to, truck. Yeah. Me and my dad used to sleep in the back. He had, a, he had an old Suburban, and when we fished the Bass Club, and this, this is going way back, the way you got your launch number, where they were going to take you off, you get your boat number, was the first one at the ramp. 
Yeah. Got it. And we would go sleep in the boat ramp parking lot for a 30 boat club tournament so we could be boat number two yeah, to go yeah. catch 12 pounds. And you didn't have a camper. <laughs> No, oh, no, we slept in the back of the truck. My dad had an old truck, and he took a, a, a piece of polyethylene or tarp, and he carried four bricks with him, just regular bricks, like going inside of a house. And you would crawl up in, he'd let you tailgate down, and you'd crawl up in a truck, and he'd spread that tarp over and hang the bricks on all four corners, and it would hold that thing tight, and you crawl in there and went to sleep. Oh, ten. Hey, and you had a sleeping bag, and that was it. You slept with them ribs in there, and you didn't care. You was fishing. You was fishing. You were fishing. You were fishing, and you're glad to go and do it all over again. Do you think that you were born to do this? Absolutely. I think that's fair to say, right? Yeah. I, 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 you I, had no other choice. No, I didn't know nothing else. Yeah. I look around and I'm like, I start framing houses. I'm like, I don't have no backup plan. So when I left, I said, Plan B is to really execute Plan A. I can't imagine, like, I can't even fantasize what it's like to work a nine to five job in an office. That's why I was sitting here thinking, I can't imagine walking into an office building and you sitting at a cubicle with a tie on. I don't know what it that would look happen. like. I don't know what that would look I like. And I had a meeting the other day for six hours and she said, that may be the longest you've ever sat still. And I just think that's it. People are wired different. That's my escape. I'd rather be out here as anywhere in the world, that's whether they're biting or not. That's me. Maybe Ranitary. not with Darian, but. Not with Darian, yeah. never with Darian. When was, uh, so, 98, 1998. Life changed. Life changed. You yeah. win an FLW tour event, Beaver Lake, throwing a big old spinnerbait. That was when I was in my bass fishing like fandom. I'm a, I, that was that was before I met G for the first time. We got to be friends, but I remember watching that on ESPN, ESPN2, 1998, $100,000, right? 150. What's that like in that moment? You're framing houses, you and your brother. Yep. I was on the waiting list for that tournament. They called me. They literally called me four days before the tournament started and said, "You got in if you get up here." So it's a one-day drive up there and go up and win $150,000. And I'm like, uh, blew mo three motors up in that tournament. No kidding. Barred a boat. Had no tackle. When when you're meant to win, you're meant to win. And I can remember coming home thinking, "What am I going to do?" I, I did go to the same bank that I'd banked at for years, framing houses, and I'd always have to put like $400 in there every week. <laughs> So I went in there and that lady, I put that check in there and that little girl's looking at me and I'm looking at her and I said, and I want my sucker. <laughs> I've been coming here for a long time giving you $400 today, you give me a sucker. <laughs> I just went on, that was the first year I made the Bassmasters Classic and then I knew right then, I'm like, went back home, went out on a job site, cut the handle out of my hammer so I ain't never coming back. You cut it in half. Cut it in half so I'll never be back. This is what I'm gonna do or die trying and here we are. 20 something years later. And your brother, Tony, always pushed you, didn't he? Always, he was my biggest fan, dude. He would he would have fished with me on a wooden plank with a trolling motor, he didn't care. He would go, I could call him up and say, hey, I'm going to Logan Martin fish the tournament. He said, come by and get me. He didn't care, he was the biggest fan. Stand right back here on the live well, dude, and just get tickled to death. And he was, he was that special brother that no matter what happened, even when I was wrong, he had you back. You, your compassion for people is, I mean, you've got the biggest heart of anybody I think I've ever been around, and has that always been a part of you, or when when you, and because I, I've gone through a lot this fall, like we know, and, and you've been there with me through it, when you lose a family member, it changes your perspective on things, and when you lost Tony, did that? It changed me. You think like, it, it, you know, I think at that time I could have went either way, uh, you know, I have had some success, but really wasn't maybe not as grounded and after I lost him I was like man I'm just I, I'm taking this way too serious I need to have more fun and then you know I do think I do think there's something in life whether you make it in fishing or racing or selling parts no matter what you are you can be the greatest videographer in the world but if you don't give back something of yourself to somebody I, I it's just something I try to challenge myself to do to do something for somebody be a part of somebody's life and don't expect it it just but I think you have to kind of go through something in life to get you reset to that. I, I agree. You know, I agree. At early 20s, you're, you're in the hustle. Hustle, 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 make it, make it, make it. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Mid 30s, you're like to stay on top, stay on top, try to keep moving, stick and move, stick and move. And all of a sudden, something happens and you're like, hey, man, I'm, I'm, it doesn't matter if I'm on top or on bottom. If I'm not happy, it doesn't matter. It shakes you. And if you don't, if you don't live every day to the fullest, you're going to regret it. Talk about how your life changed when you met Leanne. Because I think, and my wife always says this, I feel like you guys have an honest to goodness love story. 
And and it and it's probably like every other marriage. It ain't all roses all the time. I know you probably as hard, I'm to, hard, live I'm as hard I, to live with as I, just like I am. I tell everybody else, ask them, I say, man, how we? I see people hashtag marriage goals, and we want to. I said, let me tell you something. My wife's remarkable. I'm <laughs> She's an asshole to live with. <laughs> That's right. You know why? Because I'm driven. I'm a workaholic. I won't accept any excuses, and I push people. That ain't always good, mm -hmm. you know. And I'm. I said, my wife is very patient with me and very understanding. We both know where we play the best role in Swindle, Inc. She volunteered to help me quit her job, and I made her a promise. And yes, we have a great marriage, and we do get to hunt together, and we do get to fish together. But I'm sure there's times she'd like to shoot me in the face with a popcorn maker. I mean, <laughs> I, uh, it. I, I think uh, she also is the person that keeps me in check. On this very lake right here at Lake Gunnersville, uh, we came here and fished the Classic, and I caught one the first day on a lake that I knew good and I just made some horrible mistakes. And when I got to that truck, I was angry. But she picked me up on day two and I had doubled my catch, I caught two. She said, you have about an hour and 30 minute drive to say and cuss, do whatever you're gonna do. But she said, when you get out at Birmingham, I need to see G-Man. She said, this has got to end. She said, cause the people that are coming to see you, they don't wanna see this. So that's, that's that grounding where she's like, she's not telling me no event, she's just telling me, hey, and you don't want to hear that in that uh, moment, I'm sure no, you like and me. We've, we've made that joke before because the first time I, you know, we started dating to come in, she said, baby, I still love you. And I, I put my arm around her and I said, I'm going to make it this clear. I said, honey, I know you love me, <laughs> but it don't make me not suck today. So <laughs> I said, right, tomorrow, exactly would you right. just tell me I, I still I caught nine pounds yeah. and so everybody else caught 40. Now she come in and she said, yeah. baby, you know I love you. So yes, and she said, but you sucked. <laughs> uh, I think marriage is, is truly what you put in it. You can have dry chicken salad or you can put your heart into it and have the best chicken salad in the world. But you met her at the bank, right? Yeah, she worked at the bank where I banked at, and I fished with the president of the bank. Do you remember what position you played in Little League Baseball? Absolutely. What position did you play? Played shortstop, second, and I pitched. Did you ever make the All-Star team? Every year. My dad was a baller. He could play. play. I went After I got out of high school, I traveled with my dad and then played men's league softball. My dad still played. My uncles played in the 16 over Olympics and basketball for the U.S softball he's played all over the country that's you know, crazy they're, they're i never all, knew that they're all ballers <laughs> that overspray comes with a pros package yeah could you get that in frame were you able to keep up with that You'd be, be easy on that. Yeah! <laughs> easy, about blew my camshaft out. We got it on the trailer. We would never know what happened. No, one of them catch air. Believe it or not, the bumblebee took us out on the lake and got us back on the trailer safe. We made it back to G's shop and this boat Looks a little different <laughs> than the 354B. <laughs> You're in a new ride this year. It is. This is, and it's hard to believe that this Phoenix actually started making boats where the bumblebee plant yep. and the, used to be. And the same bumblebee so plant. So you can see what that year from where well, we, I guess, boat industry come from from then to now. And, that, and that's a that's a 2000 2001 model. You're only 20 years basically. Look what it's up against now: heated seats, the most, you know, all these like contour <laughs> lines and stuff. You, you look at this boat, it's special lighting and, and everything's built. You're like, man, what a change in fishing. You know, I think it's safe to say though that uh, some things don't get sexier with age. <laughs> I think the Bumblebee 354. Are you to me? I was referring to you because you got 50 you know, this year. You 50 I, I now. I like to think that, that me and that Bumblebee, <laughs> we started, you know, and now here we are. We're well polished. You started. Know. We started on the on the handmade deck on the aluminum boat to with where your we brother. Right now. To the till to I'm the, running the baddest Phoenix on tour this year. Concrete gray with some red pins. Because pimping ain't easy. <laughs> Boats and pros. Yes. <laughs>